Good morning and welcome back for our second lecture on DNA damage and mutations. To recall our last lecture, we have already discussed uh, different classification of mutations or how we can group mutations into different categories. Now, in our next lecture, we shall discuss different causes or mechanisms of mutations or how mutations arise in DNA. So there are basically four major categories or four major mechanisms that give rise to mutations. One of them is uh, the error in uh, DNA during the process of replication. Second is spontaneous lesions which arise in the DNA sequence. Third one is induced mutations. These mutations are induced by some uh, mutagens uh, which are present in the environment and uh, errors uh, the last one is errors introduced during dna repair yes so do, when the dna is repaired from mutations so sometimes some uh, some mutations can be inserted uh, during this process so now we shall discuss these uh, different causes of mutations one by one first one is errors in dna replication so when DNA is replicated, sometimes some mismatching or mispairing occurs, uh, which is uh, against the rules. For example, when A can bind with C or pair with C, which is uh, abnormal, which is not normal. So it will lead to a base substitution in the new strands in the DNA, and uh, it could be a transition or transversion. Similarly, uh, this uh, change in nucleotide sequence can also lead to frame shift mutations and ultimately it can completely uh, change the protein. Next is spontaneous lesions or changes in uh, DNA. So these are naturally occurring damages to the DNA sequences and uh, there are several different uh, possibilities or ways of how DNA is damaged or how these uh, lesions appear in the DNA sequence. So the, uh, one of them is depurination, deamination, and oxidative damage. So what is depurination? Depurination is actually a loss of purine base, either guanine, uh, either adenine, uh, from the DNA. As we can see here, this is uh, guanine base and uh, the, the bond between this deoxyribose sugar and this nitrogenous base is broken and ultimately uh, it is separated leaving an apurinic site. Apurinic site means uh, there is a uh, empty place uh, on the deoxyribose sugar at the place of base. So some new base can attach itself at this place. Next is deamination. Uh, so, so just to, to bring into your knowledge, there are a lot of uh, a, pur a depurination processes in itself. For example, there are almost 10,000 depurinations in DNA of humans in a 20 hour cycle when the cells are grown at 37 degrees centigrade. So you can imagine the number of mutations that are uh, occurring in the DNA sequence. But fortunately, there are some repair mechanisms that can repair these apurinic sites. So we shall discuss those uh, mechanisms in our uh, coming lectures. So next is uh, deamination. I mean, the amino group is uh, removed uh, from uh, the not from from the DNA. For example, for cytosine, when this amino group is replaced, uh, which is called the deamination, it, this cytosine will give rise to uracil. So now this uracil 
it can make pair with thymine. So ultimately, the normal pairing for the cytosine that was normally pairing with guanine, now uh, this uracil can pair with thymine. So ultimately, this guanine to cytosine uh, base pair can be tra transited to adenine and thymine base pair. Third one is oxidative damage. So what is oxidative damage? Actually, uh, during the metabolism, the process of metabolism inside a cell, there are some byproducts. There are some metabolites which are highly active. And one of them is called active oxygen species. There are several uh, different types, including superoxide radicals, hydrogen peroxide, and hydroxyl radicals. So these uh, active oxygen species, they can actually damage uh, the nitrogenous bases as it can be seen here. Uh, it oxo 7 hydro deoxygenosine, uh, which means it, an oxygen is added at position eight and uh, so this new compound or new uh, nitrogenous base can frequently mispair with adenine. So guanine is modified and now this guanine can mispair with uh, adenine resulting in high level of guanine to thymine transversions. Similarly, a thymine can be modified to form thymine glycol and uh, this thymine glycol actually it blocks the process of replication uh, if it is not properly repaired. So next is induced mutations. I mean, uh, there are some artificial uh, agents that can induce mutations in the DNA. One of them, so first one of them is incorporation of base analogs. So what are base analogs? I mean, there are some uh, DNA, uh, some chemical compounds which are, which carry the structure, which the, their structure is chemically similar to normal nitrogenous bases of DNA. And uh, so they can, obviously they can incorporate themselves into DNA in place of normal bases. So these compounds are called base analogs. So here we can see here uh, uh, two amino purine is a base analog of purines. And uh, we can see when it is present, uh, two amino purine, uh, it can base pair with thymine. And uh, when this amino two amino purine base analog is protonated, it can base pair with cytosine. So this is how uh, these base analogs, they can promote mispairing and ultimately they can damage the DNA. Next is specific mispairing. So some mutagens are not incorporated into DNA as we have seen for base analogs. But on the other hand, these mutagens can change the base in such a way that it will make a mispair. For example, uh, there are ethyl methane sulfonate or EMS and nitrosoguanidine. So EMS can affect guanine in such a way uh, that guanine can make pair with thymine. We have seen this modification in guanine and now this guanine can be paired with uh, this modified guanine, which is called O6 ethyl guanine, which can be paired with thymine. So obviously the nitro, uh, so base pair in the normal DNA was GC, but now after uh, the mutation by EMS, the new DNA base pair will be adenine to thymine. Similarly, when thymine is treated with EMS, uh, it gives rise to O4 ethyl thymine. So this ethyl thymine can make pair with 
guanine, and ultimately the normal base pair Ta uh, will be converted into Cg. So, so just like base analogs, there are some other uh, compounds uh, which can mimic the structure of uh, normal nucleotides, uh, nitrogen uh, bases, and they can slip themselves between uh, nitrogenous bases at the center of DNA double helix. So there are some examples of uh, these intercalating agents, for example, profile proflavin, acridine orange, ICR191. So we can see here, these are nitrogenous bases, these lines. And here is the intercalating agent, which has uh, intercalated in self, itself between two stocked nitrogenous bases. So obviously uh, this intercalation uh, can leads to insertion or deletion of a single nucleotide pair. Last is base damage. So there are some, uh, how to say, environmental agents that can damage uh, the base and uh, ultimately the base uh, is not capable of pairing with any other uh, nitrogenous bases. So the base pairing uh, is not possible in that case. So it results in a replication blockage and uh, there are, for example, ultraviolet light, ionizing radiations and aflatoxin B1 uh, can damage base pairs. So aflatoxin B1 is actually a product of some, for example, sometimes it's a toxin, actually. It is a toxin of uh, uh, some fungi and uh, when, for example, when uh, rice seeds are infected with that fungi, it can store these aflatoxin B1 uh, into rice seeds that we consume. So ultimately it uh, can damage guanine nitrogenous base. So last uh, one of them is errors introduced during DNA repair. So as we have discussed that there are several different uh, causes of mutations. There are several different types of mutations and uh, there are hundreds and thousands of mutations in the cells uh, at all the times they are occurring. But uh, cells have some particular mechanisms uh, which can repair those mutations and ultimately uh, they can avoid the damage into the cell. So one of those uh, mutations is double stand breaks. I mean, uh, for example, we can see here, uh, these are two DNA strands and they are broken uh, with, uh, how to say, variable ends. So there is a mechanism in, uh, in the cell that can repair these double stand breaks. Uh, this mechanism is called non-homologous end joint. So it is a very, how to say, very important pathway. What happens, uh, this pathway can remove these ends and uh, later on, it can join these ends by aligning them to one of them. And during this alignment, there appears some gaps and those gaps are filled by some, how to say, some, some random nucleotides. So ultimately, uh, new nucleotides are added in those broken ends and we have new, how to say, how you have mutations in uh, that repaired DNA. So this is how errors could be introduced by repair mechanisms. So our next topic will be DNA repair mechanisms and we shall discuss them in our next lecture. Thank you.